So what we've been using so far is the Euler-Lagrange equation here, that's equation 1, and the Jacobi accessory equation, that's equation 2. Now, if we want to be able to use these, we're going to have to solve both of these differential equations. Now, there is actually a quicker way of doing it. Now, if we know that the solution to the Euler-Lagrange equation always comes in this form, okay, so it always ends up a function of the independent variable x and two parameters, say c1 and c2. So if you look back at the previous videos, you'll see there's about 15 or so examples, and you'll be able to put all the answers into this kind of general form. Okay, so having noted that, what we're going to show, we're just going to show and then prove it. So we're going to show that if we have this solution to the Euler-Lagrange equation, then we can find the solution to the Jacobi accessory equations by taking the partial derivative of the function with respect to c1 and the partial derivative of this function, the solution with respect to c2, and that will give us a solution to the Jacobi accessory equation. Now, we're going to show that, and the way we're going to show it is that if that is actually the case, and that is actually true, then it must mean that if we were to differentiate the Euler-Lagrange with respect to c1 and differentiate the Euler-Lagrange with respect to c2, we should get back to um, the uh, Jacobi accessory equation, which is uh, this equation here. So these will become equivalent. So when we differentiate that there with respect to C1 or C2, it will be equivalent to this equation here. Okay, so that's what we're going to go and show just now. Now, we know that the function F0, and again, of the very first line up here, we're going to use that in the nomenclature. You've seen that in previous videos, so it just simplifies things out and stops it from looking so garish. Okay, so um, we'll write partial f by partial y is equal to f0, and partial f by partial y derivative is f1, and the second derivative with respect to y is f0, and the mixed derivative, res next derivative is f01, and the partial derivative with respect to y derivative is equal to f11. Okay, so we know that if we're going to differentiate this, we're interested in f0 and f1, okay? So f0 is uh, partial f by partial y, but the function f is a functional, so it's going to be a function of the independent variable x and the variable and the, um, the, the uh, dependent variable y and the y derivative, okay? So in this instance, f is going to be a function of y, but y is also going to be a function of the value c1. The same thing for f of 1, so... Um, that's going to be a function of y and also a function of c1. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll, we'll differentiate these out. So we're looking at differentiating the first term with respect to um, c1. So it's going to be partial f0 and partial y times partial y by partial c1, just a chain rule. And the same thing uh, will go for the y derivative term, partial f0 by partial y derivative times partial y derivative by partial c1. And then we'll do the second point part of it is minus d by dx, which is the second part here. So that's minus d by dx of partial f1 by partial y times partial y partial c1 plus partial f1 partial y derived times partial y derived partial c1. Okay. Now what we'll do is we'll simplify it again and we'll write that the partial y by partial c1 is equal to u and partial y derived of partial c1 is equal to u derived of. So whenever we stick that, these u and u derived in for what we have above here, we're just going to get the equation below. Okay. So that there is replaced by the value u, and that's replaced by u derivative, and the same above for these ones here, okay? So you just end up with this equation here. Now, we're trying to equate this equation. We're trying to show that this equation here is none other than this equation up here, okay? So we're going to expand this out, and we'll expand the equation out up above, and then we'll, we'll equate all the like terms to make sure that uh, we've, we've equated all the terms, and it is actually the same thing we're looking at. So... Um, this term here remains the same. I've just put some brackets around about it. This term remains the same. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to, um, again, multiply this out, um, or differentiate it with, uh, as a product of two terms. So you're going to get two terms for this, and you'll get another two terms for this, okay? So you're going to end up with another four terms, okay? So uh, the first term, you differentiate the first point, first uh, partial f1 by partial y and multiply it by u. So we've just done that, we've got d by dx, and we're differentiating that and multiplying it by u. 
Now the second part of it is uh, we're going to differentiate u with respect to x is just u derivative and just multiply it by partial f1 by partial y. Now the second part of it as well, we're going to differentiate the first um, part here, partial f1 by partial y with respect to d by dx and multiply it by u derivative and then we're going to be left with the last term which is um, differentiating u derivative uh, with respect to x becomes u double derivative and multiplying it out partially for partial y derivative. Okay, so we get that term there. So we've got all these terms, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms. Now we'll just write those 6 terms in the format that we have above. Okay, so that partial f, just do one of them, then you, you can you can do the rest yourself. So I'll read out one of them. So partial f not by partial y. Well, f not f0 is partial f by partial y, okay? So we're doing partial f by partial y. Right, so we're doing, we're differentiating partial f by partial y all by partial y, okay? So that's actually partial 2f by partial y2, which is actually partial 2f by partial y2 is actually f0, not. not. Okay, so we're just putting these values in and, and equating to what we have written above for the particular nomenclature. Okay, so when we do that, we get f not not u plus, and this term gives us f not one u derivative, and this gives us the f not one. And if you just work through, you'll see that um, we get the rest of these equations here in that line there. Okay, so. That's us got one, two, three, four, five, six. You know it's two of them are actually the same, so that one there will cancel with that one, and you'll just be left with one, two, three, four. Okay. So um, now what we're going to do is we're going to equate these th four terms, one, two, three, and four, with the equation that we've got above here. Okay. So we'll just expand that equation out above there. Now when we expand that out, all we do is we know f not not um, u remains the same, and the this term here remains the same. And all we're going to do is we're just going to do the um, product rule for differentiation here for with these two terms. So yeah, you differentiate one, multiply by the other, and then differentiate the other, and then multiply it by that. Okay, so we just end up with four terms, and these two terms will remain the same. Okay, so that's all I've done there. We've expanded these out, and we've got um, that remains the same, and uh, that remains the same, and that's that second term expanded out. Okay, so we've differentiated one multiplied by the other, and then we've differentiated the u to get u double derivative, and then multiplied it by the f11. Okay, so if you notice here that this term here is the same as that term, so that's as equated one of the terms, and we can see that this term here. It's just the same as that term, so that's as equated to the terms. This term here is just the same as that term there, so that's as equated three of the terms, and that term there is the same as that. So all four terms have been equated. So we can then say that we can see that all four terms equate. So that partial y by partial c1 is a solution to the Jacobi accessory equation. Now you can go through a similar um, uh, proof for partial y by partial uh, c, and that should be two and uh, you'll see that that is true as well. Okay, so that's a little proof um, that we can solve the Jacobi accessory equation by looking at the solution to the Euler Lagrange and forming these partial derivatives. Okay, so thank you for listening, and uh, we'll use that again in the next couple of videos, and it, it's quite useful. Okay, so thank you, and bye-bye.